let's review some geometry. For cylindrical cam, the space radius equal to r, and the height to be h. The value of this cylindrical cam is b equal to pi r squared times h. Pi r squared is base area. h is the height. Now, what about the surface area? Surface area here consists of the top and bottom and also the side. The top and bottom are circle, each with area to be pi r squared. And for the side, if you take a pair of scissors and cut along the side and open it up, and that will look like a rectangle. Area of a rectangle is length times height. The length of this rectangle is the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r. And the width of this rectangle is h. So the area of the side is 2 pi r times h. So the surface area of this cylindrical cam is going to be 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times h. In example 2, a cylindrical cam is to be made to hold 1 liter of oil. Find the dimension that will minimize the cost of the metal to manufacture the cam. If you wonder how much is 1 liter, 1 meter is equal to half of this soda bottle that you normally see in Walmart or other supermarket. Each of those big soda bottles is 2 liters. Also, 1 liter is equal to 1,000 cubic centimeter. Our goal here is to find the dimensions of this can so that the cost of the metal is minimized. The cost of the metal is proportional to the surface area of the can, so we're going to minimize the surface area because the cost of the metal is direct proportional to the surface area. In solving any wall problem, our first step will be to draw a diagram. And we enter what are given and what are we going to find. And we are going to introduce and define our variables. We let R to be the radius of the base, H to be the height, S here to be the surface area, V here to be the value of the can. In our problem, it is 1 meter, which is equal to 1,000 cubic centimeters. And we're trying to find the dimensions of the can. In other words, we're trying to find the base radius R and also the high H. Remember, in order to perceive, we have to define our variables first. Since we already indicate those variables in the diagram, so the easy way to take care of that is to say let R, H, S, and V be defined as in the diagram above. Next, we're going to express the variable that we are trying to optimize on the left side of this equation and express that in terms of other variables. S is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times h. Notice that S here is expressed in terms of two independent variables R and H. 
we would like to express s here in terms of only one variable, either r or h. So we have to decide which one to keep. So we're going to relay r and h so that we can express the surface area s as a function of one variable only. So how can we relay r and h? Is there any other information that we haven't used yet? We know the value of the can is 1 meter, which is 1,000 cubic centimeters. We want to use the unit cubic centimeters here because we want to find the radius and the height in terms of centimeters. We know that the formula for the value is pi r squared times h. The value here is 1,000 cubic centimeter. Okay, so 1,000 cubic centimeter equals this. So over here, the r and the h are related. Now we want to express one in terms of the other. So looks like it's easier to express h in terms of r. So we isolate the h h is 1000 divided by pi r squared. Now we're going to substitute this, put it back in h, simplify it. So here the pi r divide r and 2 times 1000 is 2000. We're going to get, so we get this surface area now is expressed as a function of only one single variable, which is this r right here. Now remember later on, uh, we want to differentiate this to five critical number. So it's better that we write this one in a power form. So this is 2,000 times r to the negative one exponent. Now, the next step, once you find this function, is to find the domain for this function. So in this context here, in this example, what will be the, the r? Okay, r here will uh, go from what number to what number? So over here, um, let's think about this. Well, all we know here is the, the value for the, the can is 1,000 cubic centimeter, okay? So I can make the radius to be very small, but then I'll increase the height, and it still holds still hold one meter, okay? So, um, but the R here cannot be negative and cannot be zero, okay? So R here has to be greater than zero. And also, uh, what happened here if you make the height to be small, and the height is small, then you have to increase this radius, so then uh, it's going to be uh, big enough to hold one meter, right? So as this height going smaller and smaller, what happened here is the radius of the base is going to increase, okay, and bigger and bigger, okay? So uh, the radius is going to go to infinity as uh, the height going to zero uh, from the positive side. Now we see that the domain for this function, uh, the r here, uh, just require that to be greater than zero. Uh, there's no limit on the r. r can go up to infinity, okay? So the domain will be, it's going to be from zero to infinity, not including zero, okay? So all positive number. Now after we find the domain, we're going to find critical number. So we're gonna differentiate this function right here. So we're gonna differentiate this function Differentiate that, that is 4 pi r. Differentiate this. Uh, the derivative r to the negative 1 is uh, negative 1 over r squared. So we found the derivative. Now we're going to combine this into one single expression. So that will using the common denominator r squared. So we got this. To find critical number, we're going to see when this first derivative equal to 0. And when will this first derivative be undefined? Now, first derivative here equals zero when the numerator equals zero and the denominator does not equal zero. Numerator equals zero is going to uh, have this pi r q minus 500 equals zero. So we for r, r is the q root of 500 divided by pi. And that's in the domain. And that is one critical number. The first derivative, well, it is undefined when this denominator equals zero when r equal to zero, but that is zero is not in the domain. So zero is not a critical number. 
So we only get one critical number, which is this one. Now we're going to make a table. So in the table, we will test three row, a radius and the first row and the function itself. Okay. So we use this critical number to divide the whole domain. So we put the critical number in. Okay. And then what happened here is, uh, it's from zero to infinity. So this will be zero to this. And then um, after that, we'll be from this number to infinity. Now we're going to see the test the sign for the first over t. Uh, I pick a number here, okay, and test it. And put it into the first over t over here, okay. And I will, I come up with, so the sign for the first over t will be negative over here. And also pick a number here, so it is positive, okay. And over here at this critical number, the duality is equal to zero. So when the first duality is negative, the function is decreasing. When the first duality is positive, the function is increasing. So over here, uh, as you can see, uh, this function value over here is going to be a local mean, but it's also going to be the absolute mean because uh, think about this, it's always decreasing on the left and always increasing on the right on the whole domain, right? So this, this function value over here has to be absolute mean, okay? So that is going to be absolute mean. And when r is equal to this number right there. Now we found that when r equal to this, uh, we got the absolute mean. So that means the surface area is going to be minimized. We don't need to find the surface area. That was not the question they asked. They asked you to find the dimension. So I find the radius. I also need to find the height. So the height over here, we can substitute this back into this expression here to find uh, the height h. So we're going to get 1,000 divided by pi r squared and 1,000 divided by this, that's equal to two times this, which is equal to two times r. So in other words, uh, the height for this can right here it's going to equal to two times the radius, yes, which is the diameter. And if you do it that way, the surface area for the can is minimized. Now, you might wonder, uh, you might wonder how did I get from this step to this step? So I put a sign note over here. 1000 divided by pi of this one square, uh, you know that this is a Q root. And we square that, uh, if I want to get rid of the Q root, I need to just have to multiply by Q root of 500 divided by pi, because that way this, this one here is 500 divided by pi to the two over the power, and here is 500 divided by pi to the one over the power. They multiply and turn out to be 500 divided by pi. So uh, when I multiply this, I also multiply this up here, okay, multiply this up and down. So down here we have pi times 500, divided by pi, so pi divided by L, 1000 divided by 500 is a two. So we get two times this. So, and this num number turned out to be, uh, it's just the same as the R, so this is two R. When you try to minimize the surface area, then this high over here will be the same as the diameter over here. In other words, the cross section here, you can see a square, okay? Uh, analysis actually show that notch can uh, should be almost square like this in order to minimize the cost for the, the can. If you graph this function, the surface area function, the graph is going to look like this. And you see over here, okay, between zero and 10, this number here is this number, which is about 5.4. Then the surface area is going to be minimum, 